And it is live on SABC3, your feel-good breakfast show. Thank you so much for joining us. All right, so let's talk baboons, shall we? Now, they are some of our closest relatives, and yet we often find ourselves at odds with them. And uh, that's why we're very happy to learn about them more from Jenny Trithawan, who joins us this morning from the Baboon Matters Trust. And uh, thank you for being here to teach us more about our okay. closest relatives. And uh, let's please begin by you explaining to us exactly what the Baboon Matters Trust trust does well thank you first of all for giving baboons time on airspace because a lot of people uh, forget about poor old baboons there's so many other issues mm. so the baboon matters started right back in 1990 because at that stage the accepted way of dealing with baboons was you simply killed them so myself and my colleague Wally Peterson felt that there had to be a better way and we came up with different management ideas and then in 2001 we started the idea of baboon monitors and the idea of the monitors is that they were trying to keep the baboons out of the urban edge. They're our friends. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah, the program works very, very well. But the, the thing is that people don't know about baboons is that they are highly, highly intelligent and very opportunistic. Yes. So the guys can work as hard as they like, but if residents aren't also doing their thing, that's Eric. Actually, Who's, that's the, Harry. The, that's Harry. Is this Sorry, Harry? That's Harry. Harry um, over here, and yeah. is, is that William? No, wait, that's, no, that's that, William. No, there. William's in the other shot. But we do have a Harry and William. <laughs> this, this little guy here is Mikey Mohican. Okay. And, um, yeah, it's Harry. Um, but, yeah, what we need residents to do is to manage the, their homes in accordance with living in a natural area. Yes. So if you live on the urban edge and there's lots of wildlife around, you don't want to attract them onto your property. Mm -hmm. You want to be able to do what you want to do, but not cause conflict. All right, and that's why we are opening up our lines right now on 083-9133728. Give us a call if you've perhaps had a baboon encounter or there's something that you'd like to ask about these very interesting, intelligent uh, animals. So other than the continuing war over the domination of banana plantations. <laughs> what is the cause of conflict between us and baboons? What's going it, Other than obviously also like living on the urban edge, as you said, what, what, what's going on? The main issue is that humans throw away a lot of food in their waste. It's anticipated that between 40 and 70 percent of food winds up in waste. Mm -hmm. So for baboons, they've got two choices. They can work all day in the fan bus to get the, the nutritional requirements they need. Or they can come down, go through your bin, get some really high calorific, so we can see them in the bin there. Really, really high calorific rewards. Yeah. So for them, it's much easier to go down and steal from human waste than it is to spend the whole day working in the environment. And that's the problem is we need people to stop throwing away so much food. Yeah. Buy what you need, eat what you need, don't throw it away. And if you do put it in the waste, then make sure that your waste is properly contained. Yeah, I'm sure that last night's lasagna tastes a lot better than a cricket from the fane somewhere Absolutely. out there. Absolutely. Is it also maybe then about um, kind of not getting the animals used to us being so close to them? Because I know that a lot of people, when they go on these road trips, they might encounter a group of baboons and then they want to have that selfie on Instagram. So they, you know, yeah, they yeah. kind of customize the, the, the yeah. animals yeah. to them being friendly and offering them food and ha yeah, Exactly that. Kind of it's, thing. It's the food. You know, it, it, everybody wants to get that magic photograph, they want to get the food, they want to get the baboon. Mm -hmm. In that case, he was just sitting on the vehicle, but often people offer them food out yes. of the vehicles to get the close shots. So, so tourism and visitors. And the thing I was oh just telling you, gosh. Yeah, that was a setup shot, I've got oh, to tell okay, you. Okay. But <laughs> I just, so just on the food issue, I just got to remind you one thing, baboons never share food, ever. So if you give a baboon food, basically what you're telling him is that Hey, you're the boss. Okay. Because in their own society, they never ever share food. So, I never so knew that. yeah. So All people right. think that you're being kind because they think maybe the baboons are starving and you're helping the animal out. But actually, the baboons look at you and saying, "You're stupid." We've got a call on the line, if we may. Sure. Uh, Noreen is on the line. Good morning, Noreen. Good morning. Oh, thank you so much for the call. What's your question? Um, no, well, I mean, the thing is, my main concern is just, you know, I mean, living on the urban edge as I do, um, you know, what do we do also just sort of when we do have altercations in the house or in the garden, especially when you've got pets and things like that? Mm, mm, very interesting question. So what Nor to do once that happens? Please go ahead. Noreen, the most important thing to do is just to stay really, really calm. The first thing to make sure is that the baboons have got an escape route so that they can get out of the house. Because frequently what happens is that if the baboon's already in your house, when the humans arrive, what we do is we dominate the, the doorways so the baboons can't then get out. So oh, yes. stay calm, make sure that they've got an escape route, even if it means leaving them where they are, 
make sure you lock up your pets because often, and strange enough, it's often the little dogs who create the problem. So they go for the baboon. So make sure your pets are locked up. Make sure they've got an escape route. Stay calm and just take command of the situation. So you really want them out of the house. They can get out of the house. They can see an escape route. Um, yeah, it's a bit of a different story when you've actually got your dog being attacked by a baboon in the garden, hmm. as what I had, unfortunately. Okay, that, um, oh, that, that sounds awful. I, 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 um, it's awful when that sort of conflict situation does arise. Normally the baboons will move away from dogs. Um, the only time they come into contact is if one of their troop members is uh, isolated and then they'll come back to protect them. So. If they're coming through the area, just really important, maybe get the dogs inside first. Mm -hmm. All right. Noreen, thank you so much for that call, and we'll keep our lines open on 0839133728 as we seek to better understand our uh, closest relatives, baboons out there. And right now, in the kitchen, I think we're going to make something that baboons might like, so once you've made it, you want to eat it up that night and not throw it away. A peach eaton mess.